Welcome to Go Sports Live. I'm Matty Marshall. Got uh, big Jason Edwards here from Tampa Bay Damage today. We're going to be talking about damage. We're going to be talking about the companies he works for. We're going to be talking about the first event. Um, Jason, I kind of wanted to start, though, uh, and everyone mark your calendars as the first major is uh, starting to be weeks away now, end of the month. Looking forward to getting down there. But Jason, I just want to remind everyone how damn long you've been around, because I was thinking about the show today. I was excited to talk to you because, and I remember my kind of first memory of Jason Edwards was when you came out to the tryout, the excessive, it wasn't really like really a tryout, but you were just this like scrappy kid with a lot of hate in your heart. And we kind of loved it. And we, the, you even jawed at Rich or some other dudes or Neil, I can't remember what it was, but almost got in a fight with some guys. And so that, that was kind of my, we were, I was like, who the hell is this kid? And they're like, that's Jason Edwards from Florida. I was like, that dude's got some spunk. I kind of like it, you know? Um, and then you kind of catapulted relatively quickly after grinding very hard into kind of paintball superstar and right away with the, you know, Philly Americans. And then, um, and then went on a big run with damage for a long time. And I, I feel you guys are on the precipice of another run. So I definitely want to talk about the potential of the new run for the squad that you guys currently have. But before we kind of get into the current squad, I do want to talk a little bit about how you got here. Cause you definitely seem to have a new renewed chip on your shoulder and definitely give a shit about what's going on right now, because I've seen you in the gym. You guys looked outstanding at that event down in Florida, the um, exhibition. So, but let's kind of just take me back a little bit before we jump into the current incarnation of the squad um, and kind of, you know, paint the picture of how you even got on damage to start with. So, yeah, I played with a bunch of different pro teams and didn't really play like divisional paintball very much. Um, like even before that excessive trout, I was already playing pro, um, like just came off of rage at that point too, or went to rage. But like, you know, I, I just really... I went on a run probably when I lost a whole bunch of weight and redefined like how I wanted to play the, uh, the insert position. And then I really found myself on Philly. That's when like, I, I knew this was like the, the, you know, the top tier of paintball, exactly what I wanted to do for you know the rest of my life. Um, I wanted to work in the industry. We ended up owning two fields as family, as a family. And, uh, obviously my brother's eight years younger than I am. So, you know, I had him to train, Keith to train. So I had a lot to look forward to. And, uh, you know, Joey Blute always tried to get me from Philly um, to go to Damage. Um, funny story is, you know, Damage was never able to beat Philly. Philly knocked them out of every event that they've ever, you know, played them in. Um, so, like, I guess I was on his, you know, scouting radar that he was going to try to steal me. I ended up going and guesting in a seven-man event with them because uh, Philly wasn't playing and it was Vegas. And, you know, Joey being Joey, he was, you know, wheeling and dealing and trying to make a sales pitch and everything. But I was, you know, completely determined to stay on Philly. Um, went home, told Joey, like, I had a great time in Vegas. Um, just not ready to play on the team. And, you know, I want to stay with all the guys on Philly. This is like when it was, you know, me, Fedorov. It was right, you know, probably one of the best lines we've ever had. And uh, we got the email that, you know, Smart Parts went bankrupt. The team was going to fall apart. So we need to start looking for other teams. So I called Joey back and said, hey, I'll take that offer if you still want to have me and <laughs> went to damage and I've been there since. And I love it. Like, it's crazy that I wasn't playing for a Florida based team, you know, being professional and living in Florida. But, uh, you know, I'm glad I got that traveling experience. Like when I went and, you know, tried out with excessive with you guys, that was way too far. Flying coast to coast would have been just miserable, <laughs> like especially at that age that I was. So, yeah, like, you know, damage is my uh, it's my pride and joy now. Yeah, there's a lot there, again, before we get into talking about damage, but um, it was just uh, it was just really kind of cool to, to, to see your emergence very quickly as a top-level guy, though, because, yeah, you were playing for Rage. Rage at the time was kind of doing a rebuild, trying to pick up some kids. Um, had a pretty decent run of it, though, too, around that era. Um, but it is funny that you did lose a bunch of weight because, you know, it's like in your Instagram handle, the FK stands for fat kid. I don't think a lot of people know that, but, um, and then, it, yeah. it, you know, so, and then it's just, it was kind of interesting because you did, there's been a couple guys, Alex Rodriguez is one of those guys. Henry sense is one of those guys. I mean, there's been a, a decent amount of top level pro guys that had to lose and shed a bunch of weight in order to get themselves into, you know, fighting shape. And, um, and then their careers pretty much took off from there. And uh, it's kind of always a really cool story because I feel like, you know, that's such a mental battle that a lot of guys have to, and girls, just people in general, humans, some of them have to contend with. And you were able to get through that. But then, and it was also kind of cool because 
you know, I feel like you found at that home with Philly because they kind of put you in a perfect spot. I mean, you were, you know, when I think back on guys that are hard to kill, like you, when you are at your best, are incredibly difficult to kill. And especially when you first kind of broke on the scene as one of those nasty dudes who you never wanted to be in a one-on-one -on -one with, you basically never wanted to be in an instance where you, you were, because you, you, you were just a hell of a gunfighter. You never really died early that much and you could close points and you could win low body situations. I mean, that's kind of the magic ticket right there. Um, but just talk to me about having to transform your body to get yourself into a position where you could play pro paintball at that level. Yeah. So like, obviously I was significantly overweight. I think my high was somewhere in the two sixties. When you're that big, you don't really weigh yourself. Um, may have been a little <laughs> bit heavier, but it wasn't just that I was heavy. I was, you know, I had no muscle. Like I always was kind of flexible and, and had speed for a bigger person growing up, but it didn't help me in paintball. Like I needed to be more agile, needed to be more versatile on the field. Um, and I knew that like, if I lost the weight, not only would more teams want me, but I'd be able to, you know, play more positions and just be a better player overall. And especially back then, you know, the original NXL, you played so many points, like you could, you had to be in good shape. You did not want to gas out. And uh, so, yeah, I, I found out that I truly loved the gym and, you know, I just went from continued to lose weight, um, actually got really skinny at one point, didn't like it. So then I started putting muscle on, which that's one of my biggest fights now is, you know, I'm fighting the dad bod, plus I want big muscles, but I need to get smaller so I can fit into the bunkers better. So I need to increase my endurance. <laughs> so this off season, I really have been struggling trying to find that happy medium because, you know, like I said, I went into just trying to, you know, lift heavier and want to get bigger. And I noticed it in the last few years, you know, when you're adding you know, more size, you're always going to add more size to your stomach. You're going to just, you know, feel good because you're like putting on muscles and, you know, your upper body and your legs, but you know, your endurance goes down as well. So this off season has been one of the, uh, it's almost been like a, a history lesson for me. I've had to go back to my old roots that worked for me and, you know, try to lose the weight the same way, you know, with eating right. And I truly hate cardio, but I've been having to pump out a whole bunch of it. And, you know, this has been a good off season for me. I feel really good when we went out and played that exhibition uh, tournament, whatever it was over in central Florida paintball, I felt good. Like Joey played me almost every single point, never got tired. Um, I can feel a difference in practices already, but like definitely looking forward to this upcoming event. And then honestly, the rest of the season, cause like, I don't plan on stopping. I, I want to, you know, go back to being at my peak and, and be the best I can. Yeah, we definitely want to, I do really want to dive into the conversation about how everyone is incredibly intense this year. Um, you know, I got a chance to talk to pretty much everyone on your squad individually, not even when people were around just to. You know, just talking about whatever golf, regular life, kids, you know, just stuff that we're kind of you know, everyone bullshits about, but also talking about paintball, of course. Um, but everyone just seems so focused and intense. So I do want to get to that because I and I, I want to talk about the brackets that you got that you're in. I want to talk about your thoughts on the brackets and some of these other top teams. But I do just think that because you've been around for so long and, you know, there's there is a, it's a cyclical thing in paintball. I mean, we're sitting at 2021 now, um, you know, you're, you're a grown ass man with kids. I got a gray beard and I'm bald. I mean, it's crazy how much time all of a sudden you blink your eyes and it's like, how did we get here? This is insane. So uh, if you're young out there, enjoy every moment of it because you will blink your eyes and just then, then you're going to be that old old guy saying the same thing to the young kids. Uh, it's crazy how quick it happens. But that being said, I think, you know, because you have been around forever and I think a lot of people forget how cool of a rise you did have. So that's why I wanted to touch base on that. The fact that you did lose the weight um, and, and, the, and the fact that you also became a top level guy without really, you weren't really like a that top level front guy right out the gate. And when, when you became paintball famous, it was because you were really good as a two and a three. And that was something that doesn't really happen a ton. And I'm not saying you didn't play the front at some point in, uh, in your you know rise to be one of the best players in the world, but you became an all-star as a two or a three um, on, on Philly. I just remember you constantly alive, constantly winning gunfights, but a really mobile, I, I feel like that, you know, it's when you look at the, that the evolution of that position historically, you know, when you go back to the 10 man days and they're being, you know, the back to traditional back players or those guys that stay in the back and shoot a lot of paint and have big voices and big guns. Um, but obviously the more mobile you are, and you're even talking about that now, how you're trying to, you know, obviously work within the confines of the body that you have to try to get as you know slim as you can, but also, to, you know, you want to, you can't, like you said, go too skinny. So that, cause that'll take your endurance out as well. 
but it's just kind of tough. But you did break on the scene as that two and three. So for the, what, what advice would you give to guys or girls come up the ranks that are that person? You know, maybe they're a little overweight. Maybe, you know, they don't necessarily think they can pro play pro paintball, but you did it and you've been, and you've stuck around this entire time and been one of the elite guys on all the, all these elite teams um, during that time period. So, because that's, I mean, you see those people around all the time and I just feel like, you know, having them see in stories like this, that's why when we get the A-Rods on, we get the Henry Senses on and the other guys that have done that, I just think it's really kind of a confidence boosting thing to know that people have done it before. So what would you say, you know, to those people that have that dream, but maybe they're a little bit on the bigger side and they'd see the, you know, these first attackers, the ones getting a lot of the shine, but they don't understand that there is another road if you have the mental tenacity and the willpower to, you know, to get your body in shape. No, it's perfect. So first thing I would tell those people is work with what you've got. Right. And so like, I think by being a bigger person, it made me the gunfighter that I am. You have to learn to live behind your gun. You're going to have to learn to put people in to make the moves because you're not as quick as other people. Um, so your gun skills are you know, naturally going to excel faster than those guys who rely on speed and shooting people in the back. So, you know, start with that, work with that, but then also just know that, you know, if you dedicate yourself enough to, you know, going to the gym and eating healthy, and you know, just trying not to slack off, it's gonna happen. And the crazy thing is for bigger people, I feel like once they start losing that weight and you get that like, it's like a high, right? Like you get it, you're gonna start chasing it more and more and more. And you know, you'll find out like relatively fast that like you are a lot faster than you think you are. You are more flexible than you are. Anyone can be anyone at this point. Like, you know, unless you've reached such a, a high age, you know, it's gonna be a little bit harder, but once that bigger person loses the weight and increases their speed and their flexibility, they're going to be better than a guy who just started off as a front player because their gun skills are already going to be more significant than that person. Their field awareness is going to be better because they had to learn to hide in bunkers that they probably did not fit in as well. Um, you know, compared to a guy who's just, you know, laying down in the snake that has a whole wall around him basically. So, you know, I would say like you're actually at an advantage. Um, it's, it doesn't seem like it because you are not able to excel as fast or get to maybe like a higher division like those front guys but you know you are building the proper skill sets that you need to get to that point and you'll probably be better than that person when you get there it's just having that tenacity to get there is kind of the hard part though because well that is i mean that's the hard part of anything whether it's business regular life i mean relationships it's just trying to stay focused on the potential future that you're trying to carve out of our consensus reality is a really difficult thing. But I was kind of chuckling a little bit because it is so true because you see this at clinics. You teach a lot of clinics. Um, so if you're in the Florida area, you want to get better, hire Jason. But it's just, it's it's so funny sometimes because, man, a lot of times you see these young up and coming front players and their gun skills are trash, you know? <laughs> like they're so fast and agile and they can get to the spots and they're aggressive. But then you know, they'll get to the spot and then lose like the most ridiculously stupid gunfight cross field to a dude who's way bigger than them that can't make that move, but just fell right into the trap. I mean, I remember, you know, when I was playing as a back guy too, I used to see some of these front players and, you know, you try to scout, you know, know, your, know, your, know thy enemy. And so I'd scout different guys and I'd watch their tendencies and be like, oh, Jesus Christ, man, this, this that rhythm is so repeatable. I like, guess I'm not going to probably be able to shoot this little five foot dude who runs like a missile off the break. But the second he gets to that 50, he's going to, you know, he's going to wait for a second. And then the second that I get off of him, he's just going to come out and he just has this super repeatable rhythm and you're going to shoot that guy out. So it's like, but like you said, if that's all you got, work with what you got. You know, that, that's why I just, I see the gunfighting logic and the high paintball IQ in the mind of some of these bigger dudes. And I'm just like, man, if this guy just lost, you know, I mean, even if he lost 30 pounds, you know, and it's like, and we think, oh, Jesus Christ, lose 30 pounds. That's a lot. It's like, not really. Once you really get into it, once you dedicate yourself to it, I mean, 30 pounds can kind of come off like that. Um, and I've just, cause I've heard that story so many times. Um, but it, it just, it's, you know, or, I mean, how many times you've seen this when, you know, you got the guy doing the, you know, just shoot the, the pie tin, you know, just like a simple accuracy drill and they just, they got all the new stuff, badass headband on, um, it just, everything's perfect, brand new gun. And, you know, and they look good and they have the, you know, they got the power stance and they come out. And you go behind them. So you look at it from the front. And you're like, okay. And then you go behind them. And they literally miss the target that's 20 feet away every single time that they came out. And you're just like, okay, man, you look great right now. And you got the form down. But Jesus Christ, like that dude just blew your head off 10 times out of 10. I need you to slow down. You know, you need to get a little bit more prof prof proficient with the accuracy here. 
Uh, but it was just, I don't know. I just got to laugh because like I said, it's just, that's just so true, man. You see, you see that, you know, people that can't move around and be as nimble as some of these little guys have to, you know, be competitive in some way, shape or form. So they become badass gunfighters. And it's just, if you eventually work hard enough, that will pay dividends for you once you start getting deep, because as we well know, that's kind of how things are decided in the pro ranks, you know, the timing, who's going to win those gunfights, make the shots, you know, that just that all those, those windows are just so much smaller at the, at the higher levels. Uh, so let's kind of talk a little bit about, uh, let's, let's try, uh, jump into Tampa Bay damage here, you know, and it's just, again, it's it, damage at one point in time. I mean, you guys were the best team in paintball and it wasn't even an argument. Um, and it, and the team is, I mean, it's, there's so many of the same guys around, obviously, you know, there's don't, not everyone is still around, but at one point in time, I think some people forget you guys won three tournaments in a row from 2011 to two, 2012, uh, which was just unheard of. I mean, all the, you know, we had, uh, in, in, when impact is, uh, was, uh, was, you know, kicking everyone's ass a few years ago. And then X factor got really good in 2019. They won two events in a row and, you know, dynasty a couple times here or there, but it is so incredibly difficult to win three NXL events in a row or PSP at the time, but it's still, it's just, you know, that's, that's what's possible for you guys. And I really think that you guys have a chance to get there again, um, based on the roster that you have, but just talk to me a little bit about though, about being at the top. And then going through a period where you guys weren't the best team. I mean, at one point in time, going back about a season and a half, you guys had really started to slip a little bit. Uh, you know, you guys had put up another win after that. You had a ton of seconds and thirds. I mean, if you if people go and do their homework on the seconds, it's, it's insane the amount of how many seconds and thirds Tampa Bay damage has gotten. I'm not even talking about the force. <laughs> but then for a while in 2019, it really got kind of frustrating for you guys. I mean, you guys were taking, you know, 12th place. Uh, 15th place. It was, it was not looking good. So talk to me about being at the, the very tip of the, at the best of the best, and then going to start to go down where it's like, Jesus Christ, we just took 15th place out of 20 teams. Yep. So when we were the best of the best, it was almost like, it was almost like we had to win um, because that's all we were used to. I mean, I think we won like four, seven man events in a row, three PSPs or whatever it was. Like it just went on and on. And, you know, if you got second place, at all like we all just felt like we were the worst paintball players in the world um i also believe winning's contagious so once you win once you're most likely going to win again maybe not you know back to back but you know you have that mindset now you know that you can take those chances you feel more confident so you're more prone to winning again i think that's one of the reasons you see those teams get to the top and they stay at the top for you know a decent amount of time um the hardest thing about being an elite team and staying in the top is usually you have to fight off the poachers at the end of the season because they, they like to come and try to grab those players that they feel are you know the effective reason that you are doing so good um but if even with that like the damage that we had you know you could have taken players from us here and there and i think we would have still been one of the most successful paintball teams um we just kind of ran into some you know financial issues and you know some people that wanted to quit and you know not play anymore stuff like that um people stopped giving you know 110 percent effort all the time and uh i think people started shopping around a little bit and once you start doing that you lose that team chemistry that bond that keeps you up there um so like you know obviously most people know that you know damage basically folded and you know we did this huge rebuild uh, a bunch of young guys came in went out um it was it was hard i mean like our sponsors were there to support us but we were always you know fighting for a new paint sponsorship um you know, we switched gun sponsorships, which was, you know, really weird for damage, um, everything like that. But the hardest thing was, you know, we didn't have a real coach until Patrick McKenna came, who's now coaching Revo, but we were his first mm -hmm. professional team to coach. And like, you know, I heard it day in and day out. He just wasn't able to process the game fast enough. And damage is one of those teams that like, we need that info. We need to be able to switch on the fly because we're good like that. We can do it. But we're so used to a coach, whether, or a manager, whether it was Joey Blute or Paul Richards or skinny, you know, someone telling us like, this is what we have to go do. And we would just go out there and play the game. So being a player coach, you know, I, I'm not to toot my own horn, but I felt like it made, you know, myself who was an effective player, uh, less effective. Like I was, you know, constantly thinking too much about the game instead of just, you know, concentrating on my own like job. So like, you know, the rebuild was extremely hard. I think we're back to being, sweet and this should be a really sweet year for us yeah talk to me about that mentality though I, actually there's a lot 
kind of to break down there, I, I just feel there's so many lessons in your story. Like we talked about with your, your rise to paintball stardom, but then to stay there because it's, you know, once you climb that mountain, I mean, it's such a paintball or it's a paintball cliche. It's a sports cliche, but once you get to the top, everyone's going to try to knock you off. All your competitors are, that have money are going to try to steal your guys. You have to try to stay as mentally razor sharp as you possibly can, which is one of the hardest things. And I feel that that's one of the big things I do want to talk to you about because I feel, you know, well, well let's, I, let me just table that for a second. Cause I, I do want to talk about what was going on in your mind during that rebuild. I mean, you're one of the reasons that Tampa Bay damage still exists. Definitely not the easiest road for you. I feel, but I remember having a long conversation with you when it was, you know, on the precipice of disaster. It was the Titanic heading towards an iceberg or maybe already hit the iceberg and you're trying to build the water out and figure out how you can fix the leak or do you need to abandon ship? You're like, dude, Maddie, I don't know if we're going to save this, but I'm going to try. And I was like, hell yeah, Jason, that's what I'm talking about. Because to me, it's just I, anytime that, look, there's always next man up. You're going to see the cycle. Legendary teams will go away eventually. I mean, this is not, we are not a generational sport quite yet. That's the fight we're all trying to fight. Like, a, you know, a baseball, football, we have these billion dollar institutions that are worth so much money. A lot of this is just pride, heart, you know, um, just that gumption and, 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 and that internal desire to be better, you know, at this thing that we love so much. And so the fact that you didn't just fold it and did fight to save it is incredibly impressive because it's just such a cool, you know, the damage story is it, it just has been really fun for me to play against back in the day and to see still exist. And now potentially this year in 2021, you know, maybe make another run and be the best team in the game again. I really, I've been telling, I've been saying it on every show. I've been telling anyone that'll listen. I'm like, if you're not going to be picking damage players in the, my fan wagon and fantasy paintball, if you don't have them on your radar, like, I mean, I am a betting man, so I will be betting on you guys at some point this year. Uh, you know, I, I feel like you got a really good chance of getting out of this bracket that you guys are going to be in. I mean, you could be in the bracket of death. I feel like you had guys that have a decent chance of getting out of that bracket. I feel like you guys, again, talking to everyone, but I want to just pause there because I'm getting on a tangent, but because I feel that strongly about the potential success for you guys this year. But bring me back into that headspace that you were at. You know, disaster is awaiting you potentially at any turn trying to rebuild this thing. What was that like? It was terrible. Like, to be dead honest, I, I never thought damage was going to be one of those teams that would even possibly fold. Like, you know, we had such a good financial back in with CJ Botsolis and then all of our sponsors. We were successful. I mean, that year wasn't, you know, we weren't winning all of the events, but we were always placing in the top. Um, I really thought like it just couldn't happen. So just the just the news in general that, hey, this just happened and I worked for CJ made it like, you know, yeah. really hard to, to digest. And for me, like I've always been one of those people that want to bring, you know, future players up. Like I like doing clinics, but I also just really like teaching, you know, the people that I see that I know can become a better paintball player um one-on-one -on -one. so like keith and jacob were my projects like they were my favorite things to you know basically create into sweet paintball players um but there really wasn't none of that going on in florida like if damage folded florida paintball would have been done i mean the kings came out of nowhere like a few years later but you know just being honest that's not damaged not even close right so you know if damage folded like you would have just seen florida paintball you know no longer a mecca and we proved that by when we did do the first rebuild, um, we had like divisional tryouts. We had 160 kids come out and, you know, play under our organization for that first year. Slowly, everyone was picked apart. And, you know, I found that I wasn't able to dedicate myself to those divisional programs um, and to the pro team because I was player coach and, you know, trying to handle like the management side of sponsorships and then all the airfare and everything. So it became, you know, it came, it became honestly one of the biggest headaches I've ever experienced. And I, truly say like some of that had to do with my weight gain again was because like the amount of stress was just more than I've ever experienced. I was, you know, also a manager of a warehouse for CJ. So like I had employees over there that I had to deal with. Um, I was in the process of, you know, getting married there soon after that. And, you know, I was trying to start a family. So I don't think I've ever experienced that much pressure in my life. Um, but I'm glad that we got through it. And, you know, like I have to thank like the whole team that everyone that stayed there without a paycheck because damage was one of those teams that if you were a good player on the team, you got paid. And we've gone years now mm -hmm. without, you know, a, a you know, regular size paycheck. We just, you, you know, use our sponsors to help us out. Um, but like all the guys stuck in there for the most part. And if they didn't, they came back over time because, you know, this is a family, this team. And, you know, I think we finally, you know, got back to that last year um feeling like you know we were a family we were a team 
you know, and then with Tim's passing, I believe that was, you know, one of those things that is going to spark the team or did spark the team even more like this off season is one of the off seasons like that I've seen everyone actually go out and play paintball for fun, which, you know, we showed it in the exhibition thing. Like we only had one true team practice before that, where we barely shot any paint and, uh, everyone was on point. Like everyone's shots were there. Like everyone was, you know, in better endurance and, and everything. So like, um, everyone's hanging out again everyone's you know willing to put in that extra work that it takes outside of the paintball field to be the best paintball team again which is so crucial but yeah i mean if we go back to I, I, yeah i mean obviously with tim passing that just destroyed so many of us you guys particularly i mean tim had a lot of friends that guy was a social butterfly he was flying all over the world i mean yeah. you know you could put up his his mileage against the you know the guys that really put up miles you know, the Ryan Greenspans of the world. It was all, I was always wondering who traveled more. Um, but Tim was just constantly on the road and he loved it, man. He loved the game. He loved the people that played the game. He loved his teammates. I mean, he was, you know, a lot of guys joke about, or not joke, but you know, they'll say like, oh, this guy's my brother or brother, this family, that, but like you knew Tim well, I mean, he definitely treated you like a brother. That's for, that's for goddamn sure. And so, yeah, I mean, as far as people that had to suffer that loss um, on this planet, you guys were, were definitely on that, the high up list. Uh, even though he did keep so many people so close. Uh, and then you guys went into cup and that was kind of that story was that, okay, well, you know, there's always so many different storylines and a lot of people are playing for different things, but it, you know, if we are going to paint the picture as far as who's playing for, you know, the most, you could say Tampa Bay damage would be in the, and also the way you guys left Vegas too. I mean, Vegas was, was such a close situation where you guys beat, you know, uh, the red Legion in the prelims by three, and then you only lose by one in the quarters you know, to the Russians who had a pretty stout lineup at that first event and then going into, well, let me ask you, what was going on in your mind when you, when you guys went into world cup? I mean, I just, you know, and that's kind of where I just, you know, bringing Joey Brat back and having to deal with the loss of Tim and just seeing you guys give a shit so much again. And I remember you know, going back to when you guys were not doing that well. And I remember I had said something on the webcast, like, you know, these dudes need to play. It's funny. Cause you got the hate shirt on. I'm like, these dudes need to play with hate in their heart. I mean, some some teams like the Russians need you know they play really aggressive, but they're very stoic. You know, they don't show emotion too much, even though the new incarnation of the squad, it's like Major League Baseball is like let the let the kids play type thing. We got all these young dudes doing bat flips and you know showing more emotion. So some of the younger Russian guys do that. But you're a team that needs to play with hate in its heart. Need to play with a big chip on your shoulder. Need to give a shit, you know, and like play like we're about to get in a fight constantly because that's when Tampa Bay damage plays the best. And it kind of goes back to. One of the big things I wanted to talk about was having to, you know, how hard it is to stay so motivated to do the the things like, you know, the little things like come out and train, which end up being the big things. Um, but it was just, and then your dad came up afterwards and, and, and I'm like walking after finishing the day and I, you know, see your dad and he's like, Maddie, get over here. And I was like, oh shit, what did I do this time? And then your dad's like, that's what I'm talking about. What you said on the webcast, I've been telling him that for, you know, they just won't listen to me, but that. You're goddamn right. These dudes need to play like they're about to get in a fight. This is bullshit. You know, this is a damaged paintball. They need to do this. And I was like, yeah, that's the, this is the spirit. That's what I'm talking about. So let's just start with there, you know, as far as what was going on in your mind, because I feel like you guys were starting to, to summon that spirit again. And then again, with the loss of Tim, what was going on in your mind heading into World Cup 2020? Um, yeah. So yeah, my dad's extremely hyper about that. Like, he, uh, he is one of the most aggressive really? people out there. Um, Definitely a sweetheart, you know, but he'll uh, he'll definitely stand his ground and uh, he's pretty, uh, pretty scary. So everyone should listen to him. But uh, leaving Vegas, um, even before Tim's passing, we were completely in ang I, we were just in anger. Um, obviously, you know, like everyone always says, you know, it, it's a call that cost this or that. But, you know, we felt like we beat the Russians in that semifinals match and, you know, we should have been awarded it. Um, it was weird to play them two times in a row anyway. But leaving Vegas, everyone was just hot. Like we were, we were gonna go into you know the next event. You know before we even knew like COVID was gonna knock everything out until World Cup. But we were gonna go into the next event just angry and you know try to you know make those those point margins so far away that it couldn't be you know determined by you know bad call or you know something that may have happened. Um, and then with Tim's passing, I think that was one of the things that you know showed everyone like look you know we've been going through the motions for way too long we've been okay with you know placing in the top but not winning 
um, just kind of staying together as a team because that was the original goal was just keeping the team together and not letting it fold. Um, it was like a four year plan to, you know, become, you know, the team that we were, um, and all that just kind of like everything took a back seat. Um, so like now it's, the team is just set in stone. Like let's play every event. Like it's our last event possible. Um, we need to play every point. Like it's our last point. We need to go out there and just, you know, play damage paintball, but with a lot more of aggression and anger and hate because it is an aggressive sport. Like, you know, with the hate, you know, stuff that the team sells now and everything, I get some random messages all the time about how it's mean and blah, 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 but it's an aggressive sport. It's just like MMA. You're not going to go out there and, you know, tell the guy like, Hey man, good luck and kiss him on the forehead and then punch him in the face. Like I'm out here trying to shoot you in the face and you're trying to shoot me in the face and I'm going to defend my brothers and I'm going to hurt your brothers. And like, that's the way the game works. Um, so like, you know, the hate thing is perfect. It's something that we started a long time ago that I started a long time ago and, uh, the team is just bought into it. Um, so like, I feel like when we were going into world cup, we were, I think, I think we would have done better honestly than we did. Um, losing a few players to injuries and stuff definitely hurt us because, you know, people were practicing different positions before we got to the event. Um, and then we were just short bodies. So like I said, the endurance wasn't there that we needed for a, a lot of us. But um, the way we were playing with the, you know, the aggressive nature there and everything, it was exactly what we wanted to do. And, you know, I think it's only going to grow from there. Um, I already feel it. You know, we have practice this weekend. You can already see the excitement in people um, that were just playing paintball. And, you know, I World Cup was hard. Like the passing of Tim, that was in our head a lot. You know, everyone's it was hard to see people and talk to people about Tim but we knew we were there to win the tournament and, you know, we fell a little short. So I think that was just even more fuel for the fire for this season. Yeah. And if you look at the performance that you guys had at cup going undefeated in the prelims and with some of the big wins that you had, I mean, you beat kind of, I wouldn't say you got off to a slow start at all, but you played DMG uh, in the first game and you won by four. You absolutely smashed rookies energy elite. You didn't let them put up a point six to zero. You absolutely smashed Los Angeles Infamous with their revamped lineup. And that's a pretty badass lineup. And you know, Infamous is one of my dark horses in 2021. Uh, they also made a couple more pickups. We're actually going to have Ryan Hall on the show tomorrow. Um, got picked up from Infamous with, uh, you know, the complete dismolishment or uh, dismantlement of AC Dallas' starting lineup. Um, so we'll get, but that's that's a, not a bad team. And you, you, you it seven to one. You only put, put up one point. So that's three points that we're scoring you guys in three games. And then you guys go and play Impact. And lose, sorry, not undefeated. And you lose by one to impact. So that kind of like got you guys pumped up for, you know, the, the game you had to play against AC Diesel. And AC Diesel in the quarterfinals, they looked outstanding in the prelims. They were smashing people in the prelims. Um, and then you guys were able to get that win by one. And then you lose by one to San Antonio X Factor in the semis. So, I mean, that was just, that was a really solid showing for you guys, having all that stuff in your minds. And uh, I just really feel that, just seeing how motivated every single one of you guys. Okay, I do want to talk about your roster um, because a lot of times people will be like, oh, such and such team looks good or they hear about this pick or that. But it, it's so positional. It's so mindset. It's so how how you know how motivated and healthy is everybody? How much are they vibing together? And then that was kind of a lot of the questions when when we went to that exhibition in Florida. And yeah, you're playing the you know, bottom list of, of pro teams out there. Um, so we expect you guys to absolutely smash them, but it's how you smash them. And it's like you guys were just, playing jazz out there and just so many guys had multiple three, four, five pack run throughs. It was just disgusting. And the, you know, the absolute clinic that you guys put on, um, out there that weekend. Uh, so I do want to kind of talk and go man for man and talk about your roster. Um, uh, but it must've been very frustrating to lose by, and that was an insanely high scoring match seven to six that you lost to San Antonio X factor in the semifinals. So that'll be kind of my last question about cup, uh, is, is those really close games that you guys had. I mean, it's selfishly as a paintball fan, it was really fun to watch all those games. I mean, your last three games were one point <laughs> matches. Um, but it was, so it was again, it was, and then being, you know, we thought, okay, well, is Tampa Bay damage going to be the team of destiny it ended up being dynasty, but your thoughts on that Sunday performance. Um, so Sunday performance was, I think it was subpar. Like I'm not happy with it, but I'm happy with the way that we left the event. Um, but going into it, like, you know, Holiday was already hurt for the event. And then Brad was playing really good up the middle for us. Jacob was playing really good on the Doritos. Um, in practice, Jacob played a little bit up the center, but not as much as Brad. That was like Brad's sweet spot on the field for us. So Saturday night, like Brad tells us his knee's bothering him again. Um, 
We're not sure how serious it is. Uh, going out to Sunday, getting ready to play AC Diesel, which, like you said, was playing really good paintball. Um, I started talking to Brad a little bit. He's suited up. He's supposed to be playing the first point, and he's having a hard time stretching, like can just barely stretch or you know do anything. Running up the middle on that field was not easy. People got shot going up there all the time and constantly having to dive across into the snake and everything. So we thought it was best for him not to play. You know, he, he wanted to not injure it any further until he got it checked out. So it moved Jacob over from the Dorito side into the center. And then Chad and I played the Dorito side. Um, so now we're down, you know, two of our you know attackers, you know, this tournament. Um, so we knew going into the AC game, you know, it was probably smart to conserve energy, try to get up on points and then do the, the typical old damage style paintball, hold the points and drag it out. Um, mm -hmm. They were playing excellent and, you know, they made it a lot closer than we wanted it to be. But we knew that, you know, with our experience and, you know, th that's just the way that we came up playing that we could win that one. So like we basically did exactly what we wanted to do that game. So going into X Factor, we knew that one's hit or miss. X Factor is one of the most bipolar paintball teams there is. They either come out on fire or they're just really awful sometimes. Um, so we ended up getting the X Factor that was on fire. Like the first three points, I think they shot two or three people off the break and it was real scary. Like, you know, we, we were, didn't really know how to react to it the first couple points. And then we figured it out. Um, a lot of it came to switching things up on the board, you know, like Joey would give us a play, but you know, depending on what I felt when I was coming out shooting at a certain guy, like Jacob would change his route to my side and then go through the middle. Everyone was just, you know, on point. Everyone was playing together perfectly, especially having such a small roster at that point. At that time, I think we played five guys pretty much the whole time and then threw an Elias in when we could. But like the way that everyone was playing, I, you know, I was I was happy with the way that we were bonding and becoming a team again and being able to adjust and especially come back so far down in such an important game. But like I said, with endurance, it just, we fell short. Like if we could have had some fresh legs that, you know, could have played for Keith or Brian, or even, you know, maybe Jacob going up the middle, um, it would have been a whole different game. But like, I get to see it in just the way that we were playing. Like I know Brian, and I had a one-on-two with Billy and, you know, he, he even came into the pit and he's like, Hey man, I just wasn't real. I wasn't ready to go run down the wire anymore. So I'm glad you shot him when you popped over the top. Um, when you hear those kind of things, like, you know, like, man, like this guy needs a break and we just weren't able to give anyone a break. And they had a lot more people to, to rotate than we did. And I feel like that helped them in the, the last few points of that match. X factor is insanely deep. That team is so deep. It's, it's, uh, it's really impressive actually how well, you know, Ryan and Alex and all the leaders on that team have built that squad up to be as deep as they are. And it definitely is a, it is, it, it makes them even more of a threat than they were. I mean, they didn't even have Colt Roberts there. Archie was hurt and, uh, and they still were able to make it all the way and to the, the, to overtime against dynasty, they almost won the world cup. Um, so yeah, they're going to be a huge threat this year. Uh, but is that kind of one of the reasons? So you lo you lose Elias is no longer in the squad, but you pick up Mike McGowan. I think that's a great pickup, but you're talking about depth. So let's kind of, before we go into the, you know, the guys that have been on the team for a long time, Let's talk about Mike. Let's talk about some of the dudes that are on the periphery that will be guys that could potentially get some reps for you guys that people may not know as much this year for Tampa Bay Damage. Yep. So Mike McGowan, he, he came from DMG last year. Um, obviously used to be PC Katana. We've practiced them a bunch. We know, you know, he's, he's one of those guys that is willing to do anything that you tell him to do on the field. Um, so it's, he's a good asset for us. We also know that he has a lot of room to grow, right? So if he's molded properly and you know taught the, the way that we play paintball and what we would expect from him, um, he's going to be a great player for us. He's definitely like you know a new guy on the team, so he's got to earn his stripes and everything, just like all the other people that come to the team. Um, but he's going to probably be one of those guys that puts in more work than others and you know works his way up to the top a lot faster than uh, some of the other guys that we've brought on to damage in the past. Um, we're looking forward to playing with them. Definitely. We also brought in Chris Horn, who was, you know, part of our divisional okay. program. Yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, I was going to say, cause you know, okay. I'm going through the list of the other guys and I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, well, you know, to be honest, I know you had Chris Horn there at that event, but I, I didn't know if that was like for sure pickup because all the other guys are core guys or, or guys that have been around forever that everybody knows. And I'm just was wondering, well, how deep again, knowing how deep X factor is, knowing how deep once the Canadians come back. I mean, basically all the teams that you're going to be playing with on Sunday, potentially, and we could talk for a long time about this. And I do, before I let you go, want to ask about your bracket, but 
being deep with guys that can come off the bench is pretty huge, you know, and not just guys that you're trying to train, but guys that are competent. And I, I think Mike, both Chris Horn, I felt, and Mike McGowan's good, man. I've seen Mike play and have some insanely stellar moments where I'm thinking, okay, this dude, he's not elite yet, but he has moments where he, he'll go and single-handedly win a point, you know, because he was playing on teams that, you know, we're at the rank at the bottom of the pro division. So sometimes they're getting stomped out by the top ranked teams or they're losing guys are constantly playing down bodies because they can't keep bodies alive. And he's had a couple really big moments. So, you know, I've kind of been a fan of Mike McGowan. Um, and, uh, and then Chris Horn also had some good moments for you guys too. So are those going to be it though, as far as pickups? And then you're just going to go with the, cause it also, you can make the argument that, you know, you want to have too many guys cause you want guys to be able to vibe together. You want guys to be able to get reps um, and, and be able to get that, you know, that, the, the gel on the field, as people say. Yep. So yeah, Chris is definitely on the team. Um, like I said, he came up through our divisional program. We've been watching him for a long time, working with him. Um, he's going to be, you know, a huge asset for the team. As long as he keeps training and learning, uh, he's versatile. So like, that's one of the things we were looking for in depth was, you know, if Brad got her holiday, got her or Jacob or Chad, like a guy from either side of the field, we could just throw this kid in and just plug and play right away. Um, gun skills are great. His speed's good. And he's super young. So he, you know, he's one of the more hungry paintball players that I've ever seen. During the offseason, he was out there doing drills with us and he had a broken foot. So, like, you know, he's out there trying to become the best paintball player he can. And I think that was a solid pickup for us. Um, and then we even added more depth by picking up LJ this year. You know, LJ's always been on our radar to, to try to play with. Um, Jacob played with him on Heat yeah. for a season. Uh, loved playing with him. Yeah. LJ is definitely a crazy character, but uh, you know, I think he's he's well, part of that hype that this team needs, and also he's like a plug and play guy as well. So, well, he's not a core guy because he hasn't been on your squad like for all these years, legendary damage player. But LJ is beastly, dude. We had LJ. We've had LJ on the show to just talk about this, but I mean, he his the way he came basically out of retirement or quasi retirement and just had an MVP performance up the center. He's one of those guys that when he's on, he's relatively unstoppable and he plays a unique position. So typically an attacker up that center of the field. So when you have a couple times a year, we're going to have a dominant center and you have a guy like that on your squad. And I'm not saying that he's one dimensional. LJ is really good, but having a guy like that to, I, yeah, I just, I, I talked to Joey about it before he even got picked up, but, and we had that discussion, but when he's on, He's a lead of elite. I mean, he's he'll be the best player out there that day um, when he's really firing. So, and yeah, you know, LJ is a very he's got a a very excitable soul. But God bless him for that because if you didn't have that inside of him, he probably wouldn't be the player that he is. So, and I just there's, there's a lot of guys like that that play this game. Um, but but that's kind of what makes you again one of the things that makes you guys so that I think so scary this year. Again, look at the guys we just talked about. McGowan I think is done nothing but get better. Chris Horn in limited spins was impressive, and he comes highly touted from you guys. You guys are saying really good things about him. Um, you, then you pick up LJ Woodley, who's, again, on any given day, could be the best guy out there and win an MVP award. And then you, you know, we, and we have, then we got to get to the core. Right? Let's talk about Keith Brown. I mean, Keith Brown was putting a goddamn clinic on out there on the snake side in Florida, just demolishing people. And I love watching Keith when Keith's motivated. He's one of those guys that when he does play with hate in his heart and he wants to go smash people – He's really fun to watch because he will go out there and snapshot his way into one victory. He'll, you know, kill, you know, two dudes in front of him and then run the other three down. It's just, it's insane how good Keith is when he's on. Uh, and then, you know, we also got to talk about Brad too. The, my big you know, question with Brad, Brad's a force multiplier when he's healthy, but he has been a guy that has had injuries a little bit. So I texted with him a little bit. He said he's good to go hundred percent. So I'm really stoked about that because he's another guy that's really fun to watch when he's on because he makes your teams better. But, and this is before we even gotten to your brother or holiday or Chad Bougier. I mean, the, you guys have so many threats right now and guys that when I talk to holiday, when I talk to Chad, these guys are super motivated. I haven't seen Chad Bougier this motivated to be elite at paintball. I mean, since he first was making a name for himself I and mean, he seems like he's, you know, just sharpening the sword, ready to go to, to, to help win damage another championship. So it's, the team is getting insanely focused and deep, but let's start with Keith. Let's talk about Keith. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, Keith is more on, I'd say he's more excited and more hyped this year than he's ever been. A lot of that has to do with uh, picking up Chris Horn. So now they both live in Orlando together. They're able to play, you know, when they don't make it all the way over to Tampa. 
Um, I think he kind of sees in Chris what I saw in Keith, you know, like he sees that potential to grow that person. So I think that's motivating him even more. And then, you know, when Keith came back to the team, I felt like he was trying to do too much on his own. He put too much pressure on himself. Now he sees like, all right, all these guys are still here. They're all meant to still be on the, you know, play professional paintball and everyone wants it. So now that he's just going out and he's having fun and he's, like you said, getting hyped up when him and Jacob chirp at the other team and get hyped up together, like they're just unstoppable having them on, you know, both sides of the field. Um, it just, it makes damage one of the, the most scary teams you could play. And, you know, I think going into this, this season, we've got that Keith Brown back that we've, we had back in the day, not like the, you know, bringing them back that one year, but you know, the original Keith Brown that was out there to uh, wreak havoc on the other team. Yeah, for sure. And then with your brother, when I saw him in Florida, I was like, I was like, what's up, hey, dude, good to see you. Dude, you're not fat right now. This is great. You know, I mean, you, you took a little <laughs> bit of here off, uh, off of here, like grab his stomach and put it up here. Cause he started to get, you know, that like Edwards big barrel, you know, but like, the, cause when you guys are in shape, you're like really big in the shoulders and the chest. And when you guys will let yourselves go a little bit, that the, the weight goes from here to here, like we all do, you know, that's, just, that's called being a grown man, you know? Um, but I start look at you and I'm, and your brother and I was like, God damn, I was like, the Edwards brothers are working out. And I said to Joey, I'm like, have you been, you know, getting these guys here? He's like, I call Jacob every single day. And I'm like, Hey, you need to not be fat this year. Get your ass on that treadmill. Did you run today? And <laughs> it's just so funny to listen to Joey talk about it. But, um, but yeah, your brother looked like he's keeping himself in some shape. And, uh, and that's really good. Cause you know, he's a little bit closer to the paintball, to the enemies than you are typically. And so, you know, the smaller he's going to be and the more mobile and light that he's going to be, the better off it's going to make him and your team. But dude, he was also, he just played again, just so outstanding. And, and when Jacob is another one of those guys, that's what's so scary about your squad on any given day, pretty much everyone that's on your starting lineup. I, I, I don't know about the newer guys because I haven't seen that consistent elite status that could win an MVP. But when we talk about Keith Brown, Chad Bougier, you and your brother, Brad, and Agent Smith, Brian Smith, when we're looking at all those guys, every single one of those guys could, in my mind, easily win. Maybe not easily. It's not hard. It's not easy to do. But go out and win an MVP award. Because I've seen every single one of those guys play insanely well and you know put the team on their back for a game or play lights out for an entire tournament in a row where they're just kind of untouchable and you guys go super deep. So if you guys can all get clicking and you're all motivated, that's what I'm talking about. That's why to me, when I'm looking at all these different teams out here, because I, you know, and you've been playing forever so we could have this conversation for a little bit before I let you go. But I feel like it's never been more competitive than it, than it is right now. You know, I mean, if you know, I've been playing and watching paintball at its highest level since 1994. So, and I can't, I, I don't think it's ever been this competitive because when I look at, and I've brought it up before, but I will continue to say it because I feel it proves it, it's a big part of the argument. The Ironman won the first event last year on a rebuild, you know, with a roster that had no business on paper winning an event. And then, uh, and then the fact that dynasty it has Ryan Greenspan, who's, you know, pushing 40, who's going out there and winning an MVP award and slaughtering people out there in the center field and just having a career event at, you know, at literally 40 years old, like that's incredibly impressive. And that should send a big message to everyone. If the Ironman can win the first event and then Greenspan can have a career event at 40 and he's a special and a rare talent, but still it's just, I feel that, and I want to get your thoughts on this, but I don't think it's ever been this competitive, man. I mean, if you're looking at in all these good teams all the way down to like 10th place, maybe have a chance to win. I don't know. What do you think? I think a lot of it has to do with the uh, field layouts, the bunker sizes and stuff like that. Like, you know, they've, they've created these fields and bunkers now to allow, you know, basically bigger people play, anyone play, like anyone go out there and hide behind that big block, right? Um, but what that's done is, you know, it also allows a person that's not as, you know, sweet at gunfighting or um, has the greatest field awareness, they can make a single move and shoot a bunch of people. So if you get that luck or that spin happen, you know, more than a few times, a team that's you know not supposed to beat a good team can beat a good team. Also, just the the mere factor that like every person in the pro division now, like, you know, even our bottom ranked teams, all these guys are good now. Like they're everyone's out there sharpening their skills all the time. I feel like people are hungrier than they've ever been. Um, and then the other thing though is like like you said about Ryan or even the guys on our team. These guys who were just, you know, the cream of the crop, they were so awesome at such a young age. They're still here. And, you know, paintball is one of those things like that field experience, like that field awareness, that experience, everything is just getting better with those guys. And like 
Ryan proved it at World Cup. Like his ability to go up the middle and read the field was, you know, lights and light and day different than, you know, that young guy that was going up the middle trying to make it happen. Um, and that's why we said yeah. Brad for us it was working really good up the middle and then being able to plug and play Jacob into the middle. Um, those guys who have been there and have experienced it, they knew what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Um, but like all the teams, you know, as we practice level, you know, often, um, you know, they're a young team in the exhibition that we beat them up pretty bad. But when you practice them, those guys are good. Like some of those guys have some sweet shots. They know how to make the moves. Um, they've got good coaching behind them. They've got good support. But like, yeah. you know, look at NRG, like the support factor that that team has, like they could be a really great team as long as they stick with it. But, you know, saying they're not a good team is, you know, you can't say that, right? Like they're still a good team and they can be a good paintball team, a great team. So I just feel like, the pro division is really, really hard. Yeah, it's, it's getting really hard to win a paintball tournament, but I still think you guys got a hell of a chance, Jason. But it, it, there's a couple things there. One, the mental side of it. To me, that is the big difference. You know, like I said, people are emailing you saying like, oh, the world's getting soft. But um, look, I, I'm a pretty nice guy, but when I played paintball, I definitely had a lot of hate in my heart. I wanted to be the best out there. I wanted to play on the best team. I expected excellence out of the people around me. They expected ex excellence out of me. You expect excellence out of yourself. If you don't have that, that, you know, look in, in a lot of, a lot of parts of your life, ego is a really big problem. You can get yourself in a lot of trouble, but when you go between those nets or, you know, between the tape, you're playing in the woods or whatever it may be. Once you enter that, that very visceral reality where if you make a mistake, it's going to hurt. Even if you do something well, it may hurt too, but there's a pain response to failing. There's a pain response sometimes when you're at, when you when you're making a big move. But and then obviously the the how quick your brain is processing those things. If you are not, you know, v feeling incredibly confident with yourself, you're not going to be able to, you know, to summon that. You know, as I like to say, summon that demon or whatever, summon the power in you that is allows you to conquer and slay your enemies. And it's and and, and, and in normal life, again, that's not something that you need. And that's, but I really feel why paintball is such an amazing activity and such an amazing sport because you purge that demon on the field. So when you go to regular life and you get a parking ticket or somebody cuts you off, like, I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but people out there listening right now may probably have, somebody has where you go play paintball and then something happens. Like you get cut off on the way home from practice and you don't even care. Normally, if you don't play paintball or you haven't done something very physical recently and that person cuts you off, now, all of a sudden, the demon, here comes the demon. I can't believe this dude. Now you're running him down and your wife's like, what are you doing? Or, are you crazy? And you're just like, no, this guy, I need to teach this guy a lesson. You play paintball, a guy cuts you off. You don't care. You're just like, eh, whatever, dude. I'm trying to get home. I'm, you know, because that, that the demon's gone. You know, you, you, you have purged that asshole out of your system. And, uh, and, you know, the hate, you know, you purge the hate. So it's kind of counterintuitive. People may see the shirt and be like, why are you promoting that? It's like, I'm promoting this in a very specific moment. For a very specific reason and if you don't have that it's not, then you're missing a weapon you're going into battle without a weapon and some people need it more than others but i just think that that's such an amazing thing so when you have a team like energy elite let's use energy elite as an example um i i i just so or just or any of these younger teams i feel that the the mindset is such a crucial thing it can't look at a damage or a dynasty and be scared in any way of course we're human so when you're playing against legends and you grew up, you know, idolizing these guys that are amazing at this game that have been there forever, um, like a guy like Ryan Greenspan. But when you step on that field, you have to and you have to really completely throw that out the window. Sure. Shake their hand and not be, you know, mean to be an asshole to them. But um, in your mind, you need to know that you have the power to conquer and slay that person in front of you. And uh, and if you can't do that, it's going to be it's going to be really rough for you. Um, and then also, but it's, but how you do that is you, you know, have to be able to excel in very specific situations. And when I hear that, how some of these younger teams are coming up and how they train, I'm like, why are you not just doing tons of situational awareness drills and putting yourself specifically in moments that you know, are going to win or lose your team that game, especially if you make it to Sunday in those pressure situations, instead of just going to play points in the hopes that you get into a learning moment, why not just cut right to the learning moment? And then it just kind of shocks me that a lot of these guys, and I understand it's, that's not as fun. It's not fun to show up and run drills. It's not fun to do two on threes when you're the two or two on fours. It's not fun to, you know, play take the snake drills where you only play 15 seconds at a time. It's just not fun, but it's crucial if you want to be good because winning is the most fun thing that you possibly can do when you play this game. 
sorry, I didn't mean to go on a tangent, but I just, it drives me a little crazy when, you know, people are giving you shit about the hate thing, not understanding what that really is, or that you can supercharge your chances out there when you're playing a team like Tampa Bay Damage. But your thoughts? I know I just threw a lot at you, but that's kind of what the show's for. No, you, yeah, you're good. Um, definitely what I would say is like, like you said, you got to have some type of aggression. You got to have some kind of hate. You got to have some kind of passion, you know, to fuel you to be the best player that you can be out there. But the biggest success factor there is confidence, 100%. And that's why winning's contagious. Like, you've done it, and now you know how to do it. And you can do it again. And, you know, if you go into any five-on-five five or anything, but especially a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, like, the second I get into a one-on-one -on -one with anyone in a tournament, the first thing in my head is, like, I can't wait to put this paintball on your face. Like, that's all I think about. Like, here you go. I'm going to make you look like an idiot. Like, you want it? And, you know, maybe you should just run to the dead box, save yourself something. You know, like, you just got to get hyped, <laughs> egotistical, ridiculous, but it works for you. Um, you know, and I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not one of those guys in practice that go out and want to play one on ones. I hate the three, two, one. You know, here you go. It's a one on one. But when it falls into a tournament gameplay situation, all that pressure, everything like I feed off of that. And, you know, good teams do that. Good players do that. Like they have that confidence factor. Um, they have that passion. Anybody that you see in the top, you know, they want to be there. No one's in the top that is just going through the motions. Anyone that starts going through the motions immediately falls down to the bottom lower ranks or to the middle of the pack, which is what happened to damage, which is what happened to other teams. It's not always a rebuild that does it. It's not always, you know, having to, uh, you know, switch sponsorships or anything like that. Sometimes it just happens because you stop caring. You stop giving a shit. And like, now you just think, hey, I'm this guy. I'm so good. I can just go on with it. Um, after you start getting dotted up a few times, your confidence starts to go down and, you know, little by little, everything spirals out of control. Uh, so yeah, with, with the hate, you know, that we've been, we've been promoting um, with the team, like trying to become better off the field, it's only going to make us better on the field, but yeah, huge, huge key point there was the confidence factor, like going to every game, every point, every match, just confident in yourself and the players around you. I couldn't agree more. And I'm, that's kind of what I'm sensing out of you guys, because if we look at, you know, I'm just hoping everyone can stay healthy for you because, you know, you look at Brian, Brian's an assassin out there. So methodical on the attack. He could play defense too. That's kind of one of the the things about your entire squad because they are so experienced, but also kind of have a natural tendency to be aggressive. So, so you have a situation where it's, you know, when you look at Brian Smith, when you look at holiday, when you look at Chad Bougere, these are guys that read the field really well, and that's why they have these big breakout moves sometimes where they'll run through and make the you know the key moment and then allow or, or your brother Jacob. But it's it just it was just kind of cool to see how intense everyone was. Holiday seemed super focused. Chad was laser focused when I talked to him. He was really excited. Um, we're gonna have him on the show here pretty soon at some point in time, too. At least he said he was down to do the show. So I'm looking forward to getting his mind on it. But uh, but yeah, with how Keith looked and you know, again, how, you know, how Jacob's really been taking, getting his, uh, you know, getting in shape seriously, because he is just such a phenom. He has been since he was 15 years old. I mean, I remember when he first came up, he did a really good job of, of uh, raising him to be a hell of a paintball player because he took to the game like a fish to water and he's been fun to watch since he was 15. But like you said, it's that confidence, the cocky swagger that is absolutely needed for a guy like Jacob to be elite at this. I mean, he's always going to be good. But you need to be elite to win tournaments, and you need multiple guys to be elite for the entire year if you want to win series championships. But I feel like you guys have a decent chance. I don't want to pump you up too much, but I just feel like that's kind of impossible because you guys have been through this now. You know, I, I you guys have been again taking 15th place, taking 12th place, 10th place. You've been there, and these guys know what that feels like, and then you know what it feels like to be one point away from taking down X Factor and moving on at the World Cup to play in the finals again you know, a, a tournament that you guys have won before. So it's, I just think you guys are super close. It's going to be incredibly fun to watch you before I let you go. I do have to ask about your bracket though. And I, this is an interesting bracket um, because you have the Russians in it again. So we talked about you guys playing the Russians at the first event last year. Now you're playing the Russians again, the first event this year, you played them twice uh, at that, at that event. Um, so let's just start there. What are your thoughts on the Russians as a franchise? What you think they're going to be bringing to the table here in their first event? And just the fact that the, the winds of the paintball gods have made it that this is going to be a nemesis for you guys here yet again. You know, playing the Russians is always fun. They're, they're one of the best paintball teams have been for a long time. They have, you know, such a great organization. Um, 
going when we play them though, honestly, like I always feel confident, especially, you know, in the last year, but with the squad that we have now with the depth that we have everyone back to having the proper cockiness and just being ready to win and having this like willpower that I haven't seen in this team in forever, including myself. Um, I'm not like, I, I don't see any reason why we can't beat them. Um, I am like, curious about how their team is going to be rostered like i know that they just you know picked up mikey warren and they reached out to a bunch of other american yeah. players probably covid related reasons um and just being able to get like yeah. the visas to come over so it, it might be a weird russian legion but it also could make them completely different than what we're used to where you know we've been playing the the russians or you know the russians with some you know fr like french players so like something like that but you know it might be a little bit different having a, a, some american guys playing with them again like they used to um but yeah, you know, like I always enjoy playing them. I love playing them in the prelims because they really show you Sunday paintball, you know, which is one of the things that we we typically show teams when we play them. Um, it's good to, to play them in the prelims and actually, you know, get a feel for what's most likely going to play and happen on Sundays. So I'm looking forward to it. So also in your bracket is AC Dallas. Uh, AC Dallas, we have no idea what they're going to look like this year. Their starting lineup got completely dismantled thrown to the winds of the other top teams, um, X Factor, Impact, Infamous, uh, AC Diesel, Iron Man. I mean, uh, you know, it, they, they've gone away. No one is on AC Dallas that was on AC Dallas last year. It's going to be a completely new team. We do know that Texas has a lot of paintball talent, emerging talent out there. Um, but, you know, obviously that's a team on paper you should beat. ML Kings and the Outlaws, also teams on paper you should beat. So, as a damaged fan and guy, guys, as a guy that's known you guys forever, I'm just hoping you don't come out to this bracket and think, oh, we're going to beat the shit out of AC Dallas. We're going to murder the ML Kings. We're going to stomp the outlaws out. And then all of a sudden you guys take them lightly and you get some mysterious loss that might mess you guys up. I think, I don't think you're going to have any problems moving on to Sunday in this bracket. But if I was coaching you and I know you guys are probably saying this to each other, but because again, ML Kings, I, this is why I want to get your thoughts on, um, I mean, do you have thoughts on AC Dallas right now? I just feel like it's, we have no idea what they're going to look like other than, yeah, we should beat this team. But other than that, do you have any other thoughts? I, I feel like that would be the thought, right? Yeah. I mean, really you have no clue what you're, you're even playing against. Like obviously I've seen them practice if it's the guys from their divisional teams. Um, but very rarely does a new team come into pro and do, you know, well, sometimes it's scary. You might have a close match, but I don't think they'll have the depth to, you know, give us an issue. So, but yeah, like you said, I, I really have no idea who we're even playing against when we play them. I've never seen a team just completely get dismantled like this before. I'm going to try to get, I, it, I mean, it happens. Um, Pauly has done an outstanding job over the years of building up great paintball players. So I think it over, give him some time and I think he can build a competitive team again, but I do want to get either Paul or somebody from the new AC Dallas roster. So if you guys are out there, hit me up. I, I want to kind of see what's going on with that squad. Um, we've talked to, we're, again, we're going to be talking to Ryan Hall tomorrow. So about infamous and he just was on AC Dallas. So maybe he can give us some insight. So tune in tomorrow, same time, same place. Um, the outlaw is another, let's, let's go ML King. So a lot of Floridians on the ML Kings, you're a Floridian. And I was actually kind of impressed by some of the new pickups. One of the new pickups that I was impressed by Betancourt is not from Florida. He's from DC or I guess that area of the world, but plays a lot in, in that, around that, that area. But um, but Betancourt looked good. That Connor kid looked pretty good. Navarro looked pretty good. I feel like the ML Kings might shock some people. It actually wouldn't surprise me given that the, what I've seen from them now at a couple events. And, and some of those guys were playing at, uh, the first divisional event too. So, and they looked pretty decent. I feel like that team might surprise some people and make a Sunday. I, I really, I think they could make Sunday this year. I know we got, we got four events to work with, but with how good some of those guys look, if they go off, I mean, Greg's pretty good. Kyle Berry's looked great in the in what so far when I've seen him this year. I feel like that might be. I mean, if the Russians show up with a, a crazy roster that we haven't seen before and they can't get a lot of their starters over, I mean, there and and AC's got brand new guys. The Outlaws are. I think I got twelve dudes. I don't know who's going to be on their starting roster. We'll talk about them in just a second. But it would in in an alternative universe, it's you and ML Kings that emerge and go to Sunday out of that bracket, or they make a wild card spot. I just, maybe it's not going to happen first event, but, and you know, those, you know, some of those guys better than I do, but I just, I was kind of impressed by the, by the talent they picked up and by how well that some of their veterans were playing. So what do you think? 
Yeah, some of the guys that they picked up, like I knew before they, they went to the Kings, and they are some solid paintball players. Um, a lot of them are hungry. I think that's one of the things that was hurting the Kings in the previous years. Like they had a hard time just getting their whole team to come to a practice, and they're not going to have that issue this year. Like those guys definitely all want to be there 100%. Um, I think Kyle Berry is you know, a really smart paintball player, good gun skills and everything, um, always willing to learn. But I think him going from trying to play a one or two role and going back to that three on that team is going to help them tremendously. Like at the uh, exhibition yeah, match, he was definitely shooting people off the break and he makes smart moves. The kid studies paintball nonstop. Like he, you know, he eats, sleeps and, yeah. and everything. So like, I think, you know, I think they're all making the right moves. Um, hopefully Charlie stands behind them and supports them. And, you know, they, uh, they don't really, I just don't want to see them get down if they do have a bad tournament. It happens. Right. So like, yeah, on paper, they probably should beat the outlaws, um, depending on what the Russians bring in, like kind of crazy thing that, but you know, they should beat uh, diesel or whatever AC Dallas. Um, if they don't and they just have a rough tournament, I just hope they chalk it up to a learning experience and not let themselves like get into the situation where they start cutting players right away and not giving people chances to uh, to actually earn their stripes on that team. Because a lot of them, a lot of the new guys are young and hungry. And you know, I think if they give them the chance, they'll, they'll prove themselves to be a really good, you know, core to that team. Yeah. And it's kind of, you know, the outlaws are also in a rebuild again. Um, but I like, the tenacity of some of the guys that he picked up that, uh, you know, that Jeremy Salm has picked up for the outlaws. Uh, Fred Berkeley's a stud. Um, Stapula actually had some decent looks out there and, and some of the points I've seen him play. Um, I just never know what Jeremy's going to bring, man. They got 12 guys that, that could potentially or be, you know, they were trying to figure out who their starting line is going to be. I, I don't know. Um, Christian Collins has been, uh, you know, really young guy. Not, not a very young guy, but very young in the game. Um, but he is all about paintball. The dude will drive eight hours, the drop of a hat, uh, and do whatever he can to make practices. And so he's incredibly hungry. You know, R Ricky is also not a young man, but young, in, young in spirit. Uh, he was the first guy there when we rolled up, uh, with our production crew to get things going for at, in Florida. He's out there walking the field, like only guy out there essentially. So he's hungry for it. Um, and they, they seem to have a lot of y these younger guys that may get Haber back. I thought Haber was a stud too. So. We'll see. I, I don't know. It, it's kind of a big intangible. I, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to see out of the outlaws, it, but it's it's more of for them. They have to under. And Jeremy knows this. He's like, look, I'm not trying to buy build a winning team in 2021. I'm trying to build a, a team that it, it can win in 2022. I'm just I just need to get guys that are going to commit because that's been a, a really a tough thing for him. So, but yeah, I, I feel that with if the if the Russians are potentially could be sparse. And we'll get you guys more information on that as we get closer to the event. I'm sure they're probably still trying to figure it out too, because that Mike Waring, that news just dropped. Mutiny posted something, uh, you know, the whole Russian defector thing on Instagram. Because uh, and then I I hit up Mike and I was like, hey, um, you're on the Russians now, and he's like, yeah, Krill wasn't trying to drop the news until later, but you know, I guess that cat's out of the bag. So I guess we're gonna have to get Mike on the show and discuss it, or get Krill, or I've been trying to get Smoke Smotrov. Let's do this. Trying to get Smotroff on the show. I don't I think I don't know. His English is getting good too. So hopefully Smotroff will be down to tell a story. But um, but yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting. Obviously, I feel I, I don't think I, I think it's hard to make an argument that you guys aren't the big favorite in that division. Um I mean, if the Russians brought their completely ridiculous stud roster, uh, you know, with they had everyone there from the you know, the run up that they had made uh the, the past year and a half then we could have an argument but as it stands right now if, if they are having problems getting guys there uh you guys are definitely the favorite there and you're one of the big favorites to win the whole thing man i really think the damage is on the precipice of greatness again um i think that it's blatantly apparent once you kind of talk to the guys and see what you guys have done recently and look at kind of look at your performances and who you picked up and now everybody's healthy and i think it could be nasty jason so don't let us all down and <laughs> <laughs> any, any last thoughts before I let you go? Not at all. Um, I would just say watch out for damage in uh, this season and, and the uh, up and coming seasons because we're not going to stop here. And I think everyone's, you know, we fuel off of our fans and our support. So if you're a fan, you know, let us know, like be there to support us. It's a Florida event for the first one. So hopefully the crowd is real loud as we uh, dominate everyone in the in the pro division. <laughs> it could be 
a really good year to be a Tampa Bay Damage fan. Could be. We will see. As always, that's why we shoot the paintballs at each other. Anyway, Jason, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Always appreciate your insight into the game. You've had a hell of a career. It doesn't look like that's going to be stopping anytime soon. You guys definitely one of the big favorites this year. Everyone, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Definitely check out the hate stuff. It definitely helps support um, the Damage crew. Uh, and uh, yeah, and also we're going to have Ryan Hall on the show tomorrow talking about Infamous and maybe give us an insight into what happened with AC Dallas. We did have TJ on the show as well. Um, that's in the archive. You guys can go and check that out. But we'll keep you guys updated with all these stories. We're doing shows leading up to the event. Very much looking forward to this first event, which is starting to creep up up up, up on us here at towards the end of this month, leading into the beginning of next month. Anyway, Jason, again, thank you so much. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.